Yeah, so this will be completed chapter ten and eleven. So today we are on chapter twelve. So last uh, eleven aspects, eleven angas of bhakti. We are going to discuss today. So, uh, so these are the angas of bhakti. So we already mentioned that first twenty were the primary angas, then the ten are pravruti and ten are nirvruti. Pravruti means which are recommended, and if we do that, we quickly advance. And nirvruti means if we avoid them, then we make more advancement. These are other angas of bhakti. Okay, so if you go through chapter uh, six, that will see later. So here, uh, further aspect, aspects of transcendental service. If you go through chapter six, so these are the remaining thing. I'm so regularly here, Srimad Bhagavatam and similar literature. One should live in a sacred place like Mathura, Vrindavan or Dwarka. One should offer service to Vaishnava. Uh, one should arrange one's devotional service according to one's mean. In month of Kartik, October or now and November, one should make arrangement for special service. During Janmashtami, the time of Krishna's appearance in this world, one should observe a special service. One should do whatever is done with a great care and devotion for the deity. One should release the pleasure, pleasure of Srimad Bhagavatam reading among the devotees and not among the outsiders. One should associate with devotees who are considered more advanced and one should chant the holy name of the Lord. One should live in the jurisdiction of Mathura. So these are the last 11 items we are going to discuss. So now, the Rukhbosa mentioned that now the total regulative principle come in aggregate 64 items. So, first are the primary 10 with regulative principle, then come secondary 10 regulative principle. And added to these are 44 other activities. The total of 64. Angas of Bhakti for discharging the uh, regulative principle of devotional service. So out of this 64 items, five items, namely worshipping the deities, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, associating among the devotee, devotees, Sankirtan, Nam Sankirtan, and Dham Vas, which are very, very important. So these are the high potent form of uh, discharging those of the names. These are very, very important. Okay. We'll discuss them in detail in chapter number 13. 64 items of devotional service should be included all of our activities of body, mind, and speech. So, as stated in the beginning, the regulative principle of devotional service enjoins that all of our senses must be employed in the service of the Lord. So, all these 64 items of devotional service are de designed such a way that all of our uh, whole body is engaged with the service of Krishna. So, that way it has been designed. So, exactly how they can be employed is described in the above 64 items. Okay, so in the further chapter, we saw the evidence of from the different different scripture. So we are on the 54th item here in the revealed scripture. Okay, so Rupa Swami, you know. So what is the revealed scripture means? So when we read about uh, 10 offenses, then we read one thing that blaspheming the Vedic literature or literature in person the Vedic person. So what is the literature? So any book that gives enlightenment in the matter of advancing devotional service is considered the revealed scripture. Any book. Okay. That should be based on Veda. Similarly, Madhvacharya has also defined revealed scripture as referring to books such as Ramayana, Mahabharata, Quran, Vishad Vedanta. And any other uh, literature written in person of such a revealed scripture. So, uh, revealed scripture means uh, 
teacher is help us to advance in the useful service. So person who constantly engaged in reading uh, literature, enunciating the uh, cultivation of Vaishnava devotion service is always glorious in human society. And certainly Lord Krishna becomes pleased with it. So if we read the regulatory scripture regularly, Krishna will become pleased. Why? Let's say, suppose someone give me a gift or, you know, give a gift to you. So if you give gift, if someone has given a gift, and if they come to know that that gift has been useful to us very much, or if you are utilizing that gift optimally, then that person will be really pleased. Similarly, a person who is constantly engaged in reading literature and setting the cultivation of Vaishnava, so Krishna has given this gift to human society in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, Veda. So if we read that, what will happen? It's like when we use someone's gift, uh, someone has gifted us and we utilize our day to day life, we will be very happy. Similarly, similarly, if we uh, utilize these books in the service of Krishna, sorry, I read the books given by Krishna, then Krishna becomes very pleased. A person who very carefully keeps such a literature at home and offer respectful obeisance, it becomes free from all sinful reaction and ultimately becomes the worshipable by the universe. Okay, so can you imagine? Huh? It is say what just by keeping these books at the home. So if, you, if someone keeps Srimad Bhagavatam at home and all, no, they are keeping the Lord Himself in the heart. Keeping the Lord Himself in the home. So, and if someone offers the respectful obeisance to become, uh, to, it becomes free from all sinful rich. Then imagine what will happen if we read just by offering obeisance and keeping in the home. It, it has so uh, so much effect. Then what will happen if we read? So, you know, it creates the revolution within the heart. So the Vada Visargo Janatag Viplo. Siladum Goswami says, sorry. Sunday uh, Goswami says in Sermon Bhagavatam, first canto, uh, fifth chapter, verse number 11. He says, uh, He says, Tadava de Visargo, Janata, Git, Lavo, Yasmin, British Lokam, Abadvati, Aki, Namani, and Tasya, Yaso, Aki, Tani, at Sermon, Tigayan, Tigunan, Sisado. So on the other hand, the, that literature which is full of description of the transcendental glories of the name, name, form, past and of the unlimited supreme Lord is different creation and full of transcendental words directed towards bringing about the revolution in the uh, impious lives of the words misdirected civilizations. To bring the revolution in the Misdirected civilization. So these scriptures are written for this purpose. Okay. So, so just by offering obeisance and keeping them, we get so much benefit just in the and getting rid of all sinful reaction. And ultimately, what happens? Become worshipable by the demigods. So forget about worshiping the demigods. People will become worshipable by the demigods. It is also said to Narad Muni that, my dear Narad, the person who writes Vaishnava literature and keeps such a literature at home, has Lord Narad always residing in his house. Even if we have Bhagavad Gita, or books in the Krishna book is in persons of Vedic or Vedic, Bhagavad Gita, or similar literature, if we keep in the homes, that means Narad is residing in our house. Narayan is residing in our house. Okay, so that is, that is mentioned in Sandhapura. Okay, so in 12th canto, 13th chapter, verse 15, it is stated Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta philosophy. You can go 12, 13, 15. Sarva Vedanta Saram he is Sri Bhagavata Ishate 
लिटरेचर In other words, person who has released the transcendental base of Srimad Bhagavatam cannot be satisfied with money. So, that is the conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam about Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is uh, this was fifty. Fifty fourth. So we discuss this thing. Shastra Sevan studying the scriptures. Thing. So. So how can we solve the scriptures with the intelligence by carefully hearing and studying them? By writing, carefully preserving them, and with artistic paraphernalia, as well as worship the deity, so we can serve the scriptures by this three way. So, of all the scripture to serve, Srimad Bhagavatam is the best. We discussed that, right? So that's why nowadays, especially when you want to celebrate Bhadra Purnima, they do Bhadra Purnima campaign and distribute Bhagavatam. I think this year they distributed. I mean, thirty-four thousand Srimad Bhagavatam set in Lanka. That is the power of Srimad Bhagavatam. That the people lose the taste in material life. So next is Mathura Sevanam, living in the Mathura. So in Varna Purana, it is stated that Varna Purana Lord and Lord Varna tells the man of her, any person who become attracted to place other than Mathura will certainly be captivated by the illusory energy. So Varna Purana ki jagah pata hai ki vaise tar consider as a captivated by illusory energy. In Brahma and Purana, it is stated that. All the result of traveling on all pilgrimage between the three worlds can be achieved simply by touching the holy land of Mathura. So train me gaye ek pair niche rakhi aaye. So you touch the land of Mathura. So that means what? Yeah, that will then it will be considered that you have traveled all the holy pilgrimage every places. So me. Simply by hearing, remembering, glorifying, desiring, seeing, or touching the land of Mathura, one can achieve all desire. Simply by hearing, remembering, glorifying, desiring, seeing, or touching the land of Mathura, one can achieve all desires. So that is about residing in Mathura. So these two other things, item number seven forty-eight fifty-four. So seven report to visiting the holy place like Bharga, Vrindavan, Jagannath Puri, the Ganga. Item forty-eight refer to briefly visiting temple of Lord Vishnu, a place where Lord is worshipped. Item fifty-five refer exclusively to Mathura, Vrindavan, and specifically mention the effect of living there and serving the place in various ways. And item sixty-four refer to Mathura, Vrindavan's unparalleled ability to awaken bhava bhakti. So these are different ways it is mentioned. Okay, so next is Vaishnava Seva. I'm serving the devotees. I mean pure devotees. So 
So Padma Purana, there is a nice statement praising the service of Vaishnava devotee in that scripture. Lord Shiva tells Parvati. He is telling Lord Shiva tells Parvati. My dear Parvati, there are different methods of worshipping. Worship. And out of such methods, the worship of the Supreme Person is considered to be highest. There are different, different. Some people worship demigod. So now, till now, we all of you might have understood that what different kind of worshipping methods are there. Okay. Demigod worship, some worship people, some worship politicians, some worship, worship cricketers and all, whatever. So out of all these worships, worship mentioned in the Veda are superior. In Veda, there are so many different kind of worships are mentioned. In that, the worship of Krishna, Lord, Supreme Lord, person is considered to be highest. But even higher than the worship of the Lord is worship of Lord's divinity. It's like natural. It doesn't mean that, you know, devotee is higher than God. Of course, devotee is always subordinate to Lord. But Lord will become happy if someone, you know, uh, respect his devotee, worship his devotee. How simple thing. Father will become more happy when his son is uh, glorified. Okay, son is given higher position. Father will naturally become happy. So this is bhava. So there are two things. Tattva and Bhava, as per Tattva, the worship of the Lord, Vishnu is highest, but as per Bhava of the Lord, the worship of his devotee is considered highest. So, as per the Tattva, it is said, Lord Krishna is supreme, but in the same scripture somewhere it is mentioned that Radharani taught Lord Krishna how to flip truth. But Krishna knows everything, so how to understand? It is the bhava that the bhava of the devotee and Krishna that he would like to learn from uh, Radharan how to play food. Also, he knows, but he is like you know, he perfectly play the roles. So bhava wise, Radharan is taught. So seems Radharan knows better than Krishna. But tattva wise, or uh, tattva wise, Krishna is supreme, and lila and bhava wise. Devotee can be superior. So this the distinction we should understand very clearly. Okay, so, see, so in the same Srimad Bhagavatam, he said, let me become sincere servant of the devotees because by serving them, by serving them, one can achieve unalloyed devotional service into the lotus feet of the Lord. The service of the devotee diminishes all miserable material condition and develops within one a devotional love of the supreme person of God. It's someone is fully dedicated and he has no envy. You know, his desire is even if he so, engaged someone in the service of the Lord, not for his name, fame, and glory, but for the sake of the mission of Lord Krishna. And if someone serves this kind of people, huh? what happened? That he will advance in devotion service. Service of the devotee diminishes all miserable condition and develop within one deep devotional love for the supreme person of Godhead. So, if you remember, we discussed three things that are very important to advance in relation to devotee: Bhakta Charan Gul, Bhakta Charan Jal, and Bhakta Uchista. So, that is very, very important. So, person whose body are marked with tilak symbolizing the corn cell, wheel, club, lotus, and who keep the leaves of tulsi, leaf, uh, tulsi on their head, and whose body are always decorated with gopi chandra, even sin once can help the seer be relieved from all but sinful reaction. If someone sees the devotee who has tilak, maybe one corn cell, Sankha Chakra Gada Padma, and who keeps the Tulsi leaf on his head. If someone sees this kind of devotee, what will happen? He can be relieved from the from all sinful activities. That is a power. Okay, so why? Because as soon as he sees this kind of devotee, you utter the name of Krishna. And by uttering the name of Krishna, if someone takes the name of Krishna, what will happen? If someone remembers Krishna, what will happen? He can be free from so many sinful reactions, so many reactions, it can be free from the reaction of so many sinful activities which he cannot commit in one lifetime, two lifetimes, three lifetimes. It can
can eradicate the reaction of sinful activities which someone has performed from millions of years. So, as soon as someone see, you know, someone is wearing dhoti, kurta, tilak, he Hare Krishna wala hai. That's what they tell. I remember one day I was going in train. Uh, I was, go, when I was doing job and I was going from Surat, Surat to Delhi. So most of the time, my ticket was not confirmed. Either my ticket was waiting or maybe RSE. So most of the time in, when I go in the train, someone was meeting me and telling that, you know, uh, okay, you don't have confirmed ticket, please come and sit on my seat. Or you sleep here. Most of the time they have given me because I was going with bed bag, dhoti, kurta, and tilak. Just seeing them, they were offering me seat. So, why? Because they know these are Hare Krishna people. So, point is that just by seeing a dress, people can remember Krishna. So, yeah. So, there is no doubt about one's becoming free from all reaction to sinful activities after visiting a devotee or touching his lotus feet or giving him a sitting place. So if someone offers sitting place to devotee, they, they don't have to do so much thing. Just offer him sitting place. Then what will happen? One will become freed from all reaction of sinful activities. After visiting a devotee, touching his lotus feet or giving him sitting place. It is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. First we can draw 19th chapter verse 33. Let's see there. Simply by our remembering, our, uh, our vows become instantly sanctified. And what to speak of seeing you, touching you, washing your holy feet and offering you, and offering you a seat in your home. So Parikshit Maharaj is telling, that's the power of devotee. Then, means pure devotee. I'm talking about that. Even by remembering the activities of such a Vaishnava, one becomes purified along with one's whole family. And what then can we can be said of rendering direct service to that is Adi Puran? My dear Partha, one who claims to give my devotee is not so. Only a person who claims to be a devotee of my devotee is actually my devotee. Krishna is emphasizing we should be respect, respectful towards the devotee. So no one can approach the Supreme Person of God directly, one must approach him through his pure devotees. It is said, you know, if you love me, then love my dog. So that kind of thing is there. So Krishna is saying, if you love me, then love my devotees. Come through him. So therefore, in the system of Vaishnava activity, the first duty is to accept a devotee as a spiritual master, then render service to him. And Srila Rupa Goswami asserted that the quotation given in the Bhakti Rasam the Sindhu from different scripture are accepted by great Acharyas and devotees of the Lord. Then serving the Lord according to one's position, so in Padma Puran, there is a statement that perform the ceremony for Lord according to one's financial position. So of course, Krishna will be placed by Patram Puspam Phalam Toyam, just offer him water, food, flower, and leaves. That's sufficient, but we should try to serve him as per our position. So everyone should observe the different ceremony and celebrate of the Lord, celebration of the Lord by all means. So now this Kartik one is doing on performing devotional service in Kartik. So, so Kartik Vrata is also considered known as Urja Vrata. Okay, so this Vrat is specially observed in Vrindavan. There is a specific program for temple. 
especially in Vrindavan, there is a specific program for temple worship of the Lord in the form of Damodar. So, you know, all of you know the Damodar Leela, right? Mother is all about Krishna. <coughs> the rope of love. Okay. So, Lord Damodar is very dear to his devotee, so once known as Damodar of Kartik is also very dear to him. So, execution of devotional service during Urjavrat in the month of Kartik is specially recommended to be performed at Mathura. So, this system will be followed by many devotees, is still followed by many devotees. They go to Mathura or Vindav and stay there during the month of Kartik, specifically to perform devotional service during this period. So, Padma Puranati stated, the Lord may offer liberation or material happiness to a devotee, but after some devotional service has been executed, particularly in Mathura during the month of Tarti, devotee wants only, devotees want only to attend pure devotional service unto the Lord. The Lord may offer liberation and material happiness to devotee, but if someone performs devotional service in Mathura, especially in the month of Tarti, devotee just wants to attain pure devotional service in the Lord. So what is the purpose? Lord does not award devotional service to ordinary person who are not serious about it. But even such a serious person who execute devotional service according to the regulative principle during the month of Karthi and within the jurisdiction of Mathura in India are very easily awarded the Lord's personal service. So if someone is not serious, not very serious, okay, and and Lord doesn't award devotional service to such kind of person. Even if such an un unserious person, what happened? Well, it's a good devotional service. Uh, according to regulative principle during the Arctic month, and within the jurisdiction of Mathura, in India are easily awarded the Lord's personal service. Anyway, so these are some different things. Observing the festival, celebrating the Lord's activities. So in Bhavishya Puran, there is a statement about observing different ceremonies, celebrating the Lord's appearance in Shilmashtami, Ramuni, like that. It is said that, my dear Lord Janadan, please let us know the date when your mother Devi gave birth to you. If you kindly inform us about this, then we shall observe a great celebration on this date. O killer of Kesi, he has stole 100 persons surrender into your lotus feet, and we voice only to please you with your ceremony, with our ceremony. So this emphasizes uh, to celebrate the festivals like the Mastami, Ramami, Nasimha Chaturbasi, then uh, Raman Dwadasi, Varha Dwadasi. These are different, different what should I say? Occasion when Lord appear for performing his Leela. Yeah. Serving the deity with a great devotion. The person who is constantly engaged in chanting the holy name and who feels transcendental pleasure being engaged in devotional service is certainly awarded the facility of devotional service and is never given to just mukti. Okay, so mukti means liberation, so you know that five kind of mukti are there. Okay. So it appears that devotee is satisfied simply with being engaged in the devotional service. It does not aspire any liberation. So we discuss this thing. The devotional service derives the liberation. So now, another, this is very, very powerful. Recitation of Srimad Bhagavatam among the devotees. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is a desired tree. So, okay, so we'll see other things from presentation. So, this was serving devotees, Aradnan and Sarvesha, Vishnu Aradnan Param, Prasmat Partaram Devi, Sadhyana. So this is from Sumat Bhagavatam. Okay. Sorry. 
Lord Shiva told Parvati in Padma Pura. So by serving a devotee, one becomes liberated. Am I audible clearly? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Am I audible? Yes, Prabhuji. Am I audible? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. You're audible. Just the voice is little low. Achha. Okay. Okay, so we saw the serving the deity, serving the devotee. होल्डिंग फेस्टिवल्स अकॉर्डिंग टू वन मीन डिवोटिस By not observing the festival according to one's financial position, one commits the second and twenty-fourth offense from chapter eight. So, observing the Shah festival, so we discuss this thing. We discuss this thing also observing the Arctic festival. Okay. So now we are going to discuss about five potent forms of devotional service. Okay. So the recitation you know, of Shrimad Bhagavatam amongst the devotees. Okay. So. Shrimad Bhagavatam is the desired way of Vedic knowledge. What Shukdev Goswami says in Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, first chapter, third verse, very important. Nikama kalpa taro galitam phalam sukham mukhad amrut trvya sinitam pibad Bhagavatam ratmalay muhur aho rasik bhuvi bhadika. Oh, expert and thoughtful man, release Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of desired tree of Vedic literature. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is the mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literature. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is the mature fruit, means it's the conclusion of all the Veda, okay. and it emanates from the leaves of Sukhdev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. So, kabi kabi na ped pe phal hota hai, aam hota hai. Usko jab होता है कि खाता है पेरेट कम से बाइट इट एंड इफ यू ईट दैट मैंगो मोर स्वीटर नॉट ओनली मैंगो एनी फूड बिकम मोर स्वीट सो सुका मींस पेरेट सो दिस सुखदेव गोस्वामी इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द लीव्स सॉरी दिस श्रीमद् भागवतम इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द लीव्स ऑफ सुखदेव गोस्वामी सो श्रीमद् भागवतम इज द राइटन फूड ऑफ ऑल द वैदिक लिटरेचर एंड इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द माउथ ऑफ सुखदेव गोस्वामी सुका मींस पेरेट सो दैट्स व्हाई इट इज सेड इज को It's even more tasteful. Although it is nectar and juice, was already releasable for all, including liberated souls. So it has become more taste, tasteful. So, Srimad Bhagavatam is the desired tree of Vedic wisdom. Veda itself is aggregate knowledge. That means knowledge. Okay. And whatever knowledge is required for human society is perfectly present in Srimad Bhagavatam. So there are different branches of knowledge in Vedic writing, including sociology, politics, medicine, military art. All these and other branches of the knowledge are perfectly described in the Veda. So everything is given in Veda. Veda means storehouse of knowledge. So as far as spiritual knowledge is concerned, that is also perfectly described in that. So nowadays in modern education, library you find so many books. They generally talk about material knowledge. 
but they don't uh, talk about spiritual knowledge but if you go through simad bhagavatam talks everything all the material knowledge as well as spiritual knowledge okay so and simad that's why simad bhagavatam as far as spiritual knowledge is concerned that is also perfectly described there and simad bhagavatam is considered to be the right man fruit of this desire fulfilling tree of veda so a tree is honored by the production of its fruit for example mango tree is considered very valuable because it produces the king of all fruits mango when mango fruit becomes ripe and it is the greatest gift of that tree and simad bhagavatam is similarly held to be the ripe and fruit of the vedic tree less ripe and fruit becomes more releasable when first touched by the beak of a parrot or so simad bhagavatam has become more releasable by being delivered through the transcendental mouth of from the ghost okay so simad bhagavatam should be received in disciple succession without breakage so the ripe fruit comes from the up, upper part of the tree onto the ground by the process of being handed down from the higher branch to lower branch the person will that with the fruit does not break so this is basically we should hear this thing in param para we should not hear from the professional reciters okay so when simad bhagavatam received in param para or disciple succession he likewise remain unbroken this in bhagavad gita we have heard that evam evam vyaspate yogam prokta vanam vyayam yasman manave prahur manurish papu bravit evam parampara prapta imam rajar se vidu sakale nam tatha knowledge was given in parampara so okay so that the disciple success of parampara is the way of receiving transcendental knowledge such knowledge must come down to the disciple success to authorize person to know the real purpose of sastra so we have given given four parampara sri sampradaya rudra sampradaya mar sampradaya and brahma sampradaya the knowledge should be received from that sampradaya only it should not go beyond that sampradaya because other sampradayas are not recommended by law so why we should go there and if, if we go there we will not get authorized knowledge okay so the so that's why chetan mahaprabhu recommended one learn shrimad bhagavatam from the mouth of self realized person called bhagavatam bhagavatam means in relationship with the personality of god and bhagavan bhagavan is just like vasudev so vasudev means the father of lord krishna but vasudev means the son of vasudev kunti kunti means kunti but konte i to add a in to and become konte means refer to arjun prutha the son of prutha is known as partha arjun so yadu dynasty the one who has born in the yadu dynasty they are known as yadavas so similarly bhagwan if someone is related to bhagwan that is called bhagwat okay there are two kind of bhagwat bhuk bhagwat and that person bhagwat bhuk bhagwat means the literature we see and person bhagwat means one who is following the instruction of shrimad bhagwat and carefully attentively so that are, there are two bhagwats one is bhuk bhagwat and one is person bhagwat okay hope you will remember this there are two kind of bhagwat bhuk bhagwat and person bhagwat so the devotee is so bhagavata means in relationship with the personality of god so the devotee is sometimes called bhagavatam the, and the book that is in relationship with the devotional service to the supreme person god is god head is also known as bhagavatam sri chaitanya mahaprabhu recommended that in order to release the real taste of shrimad bhagavatam one should take the instruction from the person bhagavatam So just like you know, some guru, they are like a person. That's why this can also be read Sila Prabhupada Lila Amrut, who was a person, who exhibited the qualities of 
भागवत महाभागवत वैष्णव श्रीमद भागवत और भगवत गीता अदर वेदिक लिटरेचर श्रीमद भागवत में रिलिशिबल इवन बाय लिबरेटेड पर्सन Sukhdev Goswami admitted that although he was liberated from the within, from within the very womb of his mother, it was only after releasing Sumat Bhagwatam that he became great devotee. So Sukhdev Goswami was earlier in personality; he was Brahmavadi. Four Kumaras were in personality Mayavadi. So Sukhdev Goswami, after hearing Sumat Bhagwatam, he became a great devotee of Lord. So he is one of the twelve Mahajans. Thus, one who is desirous of advancing Krishna consciousness should release the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam, the discussion of authorized devotees. Thus, one who is desirous of advancing in devotion, Krishna consciousness, should release the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam to the discussion of authorized devotees. Okay, so someone is authorized, then you know, we should hear from him. Just like someone asks Sila Prabhupada, when did you come to some? The one reporter asks Sila Prabhupada, when did you come to know that you can spread the message of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavad? Then Prabhupada told him, or he can become guru. So Prabhupada told him when his guru told him to go and preach, he, he thought that he he should do that. So very simple. Someone is order, he can. They are authorized. So Sukhdev Goswami admits that. Although he was very much attracted to impersonal Brahman when he heard the transcendental passion of supreme personality God from the mouth of his father, Vyasadeva, he becomes attracted to Srimad Bhagavatam. The idea is that Vyasadeva was also a self-realized soul. This mature contribution of transcendental knowledge was delivered directly to Sukhdeva Goswami in manner in in the manner indicated. Are right. Anything I am missing? Is it really a problem? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Yeah, I don't know why this is this is. Hare Krishna, Prabhu ji. Ha, Hare Krishna. Now you are audible, Prabhu ji. Am I audible now? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Your voice is coming very low. Actually, you are audible. Your voice is coming very low. Oh, why? Yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes.
residing in Mathura, Mathura Mandala city, worshipping the deity Sri Murthy, angry seven Priti, hearing Simhar Bhagavatam, chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, serving the deities. These are five potent forms. So this is what we are going to discuss. We already discussed 59 items. So last five we are going to discuss now. So Sila Prabhupada says these practices are so potent that small attachment for any of these five items, this five, any of these five, deciding in Mathura, worshipping the deity, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting Hare Krishna mantra, and serving deities. So these are very, very potent. Okay. So are so potent that small attachment for any of these five items can arouse devotional ecstasy, even in the neophyte. The devotional ecstasy refer to bhava bhakti neophyte in this context, refer to one with weak attachment. Thus, even a neophyte devotee with a weak attachment to Krishna can quickly achieve bhava bhakti by practicing any of these five most potent items. They are very, very powerful. So, Sila Prabhupada used this five, uh, five most potent item as a pillar on which between the basic spiritual program of Iskwan. So, Iskwan mm -hmm. may dekhenge to Naam Sankirtan hota hai, Bhagavat Shravan hota hai, Daily Simbad Bhagavatam class hota hai, Devotee Association hota hai, Deity Worship hota hai. And especially in the, during the time of Gaur Ponima, we go to Mayapur, Kalkatta, Mayapur. Then during the time of Rathyatra, we go to Jagannath Puri. During the Karting months, we go to Vrindavan. It's Mathura was specifically, but here it is mentioned Mathura was. Okay. So, Srila Prabhupada used this five most potent items as a pillar on which he built the basic spiritual program of this one. And any of these items can quickly arouse Bhava Bhakti even in the new fight. Okay. However, these powerful items will not bestow their effect as long as one commits the offense. He must not commit the offense. So the devotee who wants to make rapid advancements should focus on these five potent items and very diligently avoid offenses, especially offense to Vaishnavas. Okay. So now five potent forms devotional service an example of how each item evokes power. So attachment to serving the lotus feet of the deity. Okay. So We'll come to that later. So now associating with the dead one's devotee. The importance of discussing Srimad Bhagavatam in the society of pure devotee was explained by Sukhdev Goswami. Uh, Sonak Muni during the meeting at Nemi Saran. In the presence of Sukhdev Goswami. Sukhdev Goswami confirmed that if someone is fortunate enough to associate with the pure devotee of the Lord, even for a moment, that particular moment is so valuable that even those pious activities that can promote one to heavenly planets or liberation from the material uh, miseries cannot compare to it. So associating with the devotee for a moment cannot be compared with this thing. That promote to, uh, one to the heavenly planets, pious activities promote one to the heavenly planets or give liberation from material miseries cannot be compared. So, Get even momentary association with the pure devotee, even seeing them. Okay. So, in other words, those who are attached to Srimad Bhagavatam do not care for any kind of benefit derived from the elevation to higher planetary kingdom or for the liberation which is conceived of by the impersonalists. Okay, so as such, the association of pure devotee is so transcendental value that. No kind of material happiness can compare to it. So, in Hari Bhakti Subodai, conversation between Prahlad Maharaj and his father, Hiranyakan in which Hiranyakan Subha addressed Prahlad Maharaj in this way. My dear son, association is very important. Hiranyakan Subha is telling Prahlad Maharaj that association is very important. It acts just like a crystal stone which will reflect anything which is put before it. Crystal stone ke aage kuch bhi rakh doge, it will reflect, right? Just like a mirror, it will easily reflect. Similarly, if we associate with the flower-like devotees of the Lord, if our heart are crystal clear, 
Crystal clear means we should not have any. We should not have duplicity. It should be very simple. So then, if you associate with tower like devotee with this heart, clear heart, then what happens? Certainly, the same action will be there. Means we'll reflect the qualities of those pure devotees. Only require condition that we should be pure in our heart. So means sorry, clear in our hearts, no duplicity. And no enemy. So another example given in this connection is that if man is potent and if woman is not deceased, then by their conjugation there will be conception. In the same way, if the recipient of the spiritual knowledge and deliverer of the spiritual knowledge are sincere and bona fide, there will be good result. So if srota is also potent and vakta is also authorized and protect, uh, potent, then there will be good result. So that is the important of association. So now chanting the holy name of the Lord, the, the importance of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Ram. So we are, I'm just repeating, we are on the five potent angas of bhakti, Bhagavat Sravan, Bhakta Sane Vas, Bhakta Sange Vas, Association of the Devotee, chanting the holy name of the Lord. Okay. It's very strongly stressed. Chanting Hare Krishna mantra is very strongly stated in second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So it is Sukhdev Goswami tells Maharaj Parishit that my dear king, if one is spontaneously attached to the chanting of Hare Krishna mantra, Mahamantra, So he says here that talking constant constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord after the ways of great authority is the doubtless and fearless way of success for all, including those who are free from all material desire, those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, and also those who are self-satisfied by the deeds of person. You see, by following the footsteps of great Acharyas, if we shared, okay, then it is doubtless and fearless way of success for all. So, which are all three, including those who are free from all material desire, for them it is success. Those who are desirous of all material enjoyment, they will also become successful. And also, those who are self satisfied by the dint of transcendence, they will also become successful. Okay. So he said that, my dear king, if one spontaneously attached to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, it is understood that he has attained the highest perfection stage. He has attained the highest perfection stage. It is specifically mentioned that the karmi who are aspiring after the fruity result of their activity, Salvanis who are aspiring to become one with the Supreme Person, Yuki who are aspiring after the perfection can achieve the result of all perfection stage simply by chanting Mahamantra. We don't need to accept any other process. Chanting will give all results. So they go some use the word nirnitam, which means it has already been decided. So he was a liberated and therefore could not accept anything that was not concluded. So Sukhde Goswami specially stressed that it has already been concluded that one who has come to the stage of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra with the determination and steadiness must be considered to have already passed the trials of fruitive activity, mental speculation, mystic yoga. So if someone is chanting, then we should assume that he has uh, already passed the, is beyond all the fruitive activities, mental speculation, mystic yoga. So he has passed all this stage. Means he has achieved all mystic power, he has achieved all spec, uh, conclusion of all mental speculation, and beyond motivation. Sometimes the devotee speaks that become true. Not sometimes, many times. Okay. If he is sincere. Okay. So, Krishna tells Arjuna that anyone who is engaged in chanting my trans transcendental name must be considered to be always. If, if someone is chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then we should, means we are always with Krishna. If you are Krishna, with Krishna, no one can harm us. We are here, we become fearless. 
and i may tell you frankly that for such a duty i am become easily purchased so if you are any any uh, stressful situation if we chant krishna then krishna will take care so in padma purana it is stated the chanting of hari krishna mantra is present only on the lips of person who has for many birth worship pass with it so that's what we discuss in bhagavad gita bhavan am chant naam hai gaan man mam prapatte vasuti vam saram samat sudhirlo Yes, yeah, so it is further said. Sorry, that is for Jani, but here it is mentioned about chanting is possible for the person who has was was there for many births. There is no difference between the holy name of the Lord and Lord Himself. As such, the holy name is perfect as the Lord Himself in the fullness, purity, and eternity. The holy name is not material sound vibration, nor has it any material contamination. Still, if we commit the offense unto the lotus feet of the Lord, then you know we can take the shelter of the Lord. Uh, I'll continue. I I would like to finish this chapter. Then I'll continue the Bhagavad Gita. The holy name of the holy name cannot therefore be chanted offenselessly by one who has failed to purify his senses. So unless we have purified our senses, we cannot chant offenselessly. In other words, materialistic sense senses cannot properly chant the holy name of Hare Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But by adopting this chanting process, one is given chance to actually purify himself. But to purify, how can we purify the senses then? By chanting only. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says: "Cheto darpana marchanam, bhav mahadava girva pan, sreya kera vachandrika vicharanam." विद्यावधूजीवन so by adopting this chanting process one is given a chance to actually purify himself so that he may very soon chant often specially so just for those who has joined for bhagavad gita i'll continue after some time okay. i want to complete this chapter that how chetan mahaprabhu has recommended that chant the hare krishna mantra and that everyone chant the hare krishna mantra just to clean the dust from the heart If the dust of heart is cleansed away, then one can actually understand the importance of the holy name. For person who are not inclined to clean the dust from their heart and who want to keep things as they are, it is not possible to derive transcendental result of chanting Hare Krishna. So when we are chanting, our inclination should be to please Krishna and purify our heart from sense gratification. If we are not chanting with this mentality, Then it is not possible that we derive the transcendental result of chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. One should therefore be encouraged to develop his service attitude towards Lord because this will help him to chant without any offense. So if he chants with service attitude, then what will happen? Then he will he will be able to chant without offense. So under the guidance of spiritual master, disciple is trained to render service. At the same time, chant the Hare Krishna mantra. As soon as one develops this spontaneous service attitude, he can immediately understand the transcendental nature of the holy name of the Lord. So we saw this thing: chanting the holy name of the Lord, associating the devotee, and reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, serving the deity. So these so four items out of five potent items. Now, last is living in Mathura. Yeah, so. Padma Purana it is stated the Padma Purana states the importance of living at holy places like Mathura. The to travel to different places of pilgrimage means to attain the emancipation from material bondage. So if they are going to holy places, not for the retreat or picnic. The purpose of traveling to holy places, all of us are going to go Vinda. So our attitude should not be you know. That we are going for a retreat or picnic, 
our attitude is we are going to Vrindavan so that we can be free from the material desire and we develop the service attitude towards Lord Krishna. So this emancipation, however, is not highest perfection of spirit. After attaining this liberated stage, one has to become engaged in devotional service. So we should, that's what I said, we should be engaged in the service of Krishna. We should be free from the material desire and we should be engaged in the service of Krishna. That is very, very important. So after attainment of Brahma Bhuta stage, one can further advance to engagement in devotional service. So this attainment of transcendental loving service to the Lord is the goal of life. It can be achieved very easily for one who lives in Mathura Mandar, even for a few seconds. Even if we stay a few seconds in Mathura Mandar, we can be free from this. No? Uh, we can attain transcendental loving service to the Lord just by staying a few seconds in the Lord. So, who is that person? who will not agree to worship the land of Mathura. Mathura can deliver all desire, desires and ambition of putty workers and of the salvation age, who desire to become one with the Supreme Brahman. To free everyone from material desire. Certainly Mathura will deliver the desire of devotees who simply aspire to engage in the devotional service of the Lord. But if you spiritual desire, Krishna will complete. So, how wonderful it is that simply by reciting Mathura even for one day, one can achieve transcendental loving attitude towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This land of Mathura must be more glorious than Vaikuntha Dhamma Kingdom of God. So we have seen this in the nectar of instruction. So chapter 13 is also similar. Five potent form of devotional service. Okay. So I will discuss this chapter tomorrow. I will not be able to discuss today. Because many has joined for Bhagavad Gita. Or what should I do? Shall I continue this thing? Hare Krishna. Yes, Prabhuji. Shall I continue with Nectar of Devotion? Yes, Prabhuji. So that I feel a big chunk of chapter will be over. Okay, so this is the glory of. High potent form of devotion service. Okay, so we discussed this in worshipping the deities. So he has composed beautiful metaphor to illustrate the special efficacy of deity worship. My dear friend, if you still have any desire to enjoy the company of your friend within the material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna who is standing on the bank of Kesigar. He is known as Kuvinda. His eyes are very enchanting. He is playing upon his flute and on his head there is a peacock feather. And his whole body is illuminated by moonlight. What he is trying to say basically, so if someone wants to enjoy material life, okay. so what we discussed sometime before, that as soon as someone stay in Mathura for one few seconds or one day, then what will happen? That his material desire will go away. That's why Rupa Swami is telling here that, you know, that my dear friend, if you still have any desire to enjoy company of your friends within the material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna. Who is standing on the bank of Kesi Ghat is known as Govinda and his eyes are very enchanting. Is playing upon his flute and on his head there is a peacock feather. And his whole body is illuminating by the moonlight in the sky. So we should not see the form of Krishna. He is uh, standing at Kesigar. Okay, if you want to enjoy the company of uh, our material friends, if you see him, then you will not be able to do that enjoyment. So next he says that this type of uh, poetic metaphor condemns what it seems to praise and praise what it seems to condemn. Means here about anyway, basically says if you want to enjoy, indirectly says that indirectly is condemning that we should not have a material attachment. We are not material friends, and we should uh, 
attached to Krishna. So that's why he's saying that uh, poetic metaphor condenses what, what it seems to praise. So here, if you see, he has condemned indirectly. No, they say not. Don't see Krishna if you want to enjoy material things. So what he's saying here that this type of poetic metaphor condemns what it seems to praise. But look, as seeing the Krishna is praiseworthy, but it is condemned. But that is not real condemns. Does it instruct that and praise what it seems to condemn? So indirectly, it is said here that which, if you want to enjoy the company of material hands, that has been praised. Does it instruct said that one to uh, instruct one to see the beautiful deity of Govinda, of Vrindavan, and thereby become completely indifferent to the attraction of material? So indirectly, what he is saying that. We should see the beautiful of Go, beautiful face of Govinda so that we can free from the material emancipation. So complete indifference is one of the nine symptoms of bhava bhakti, namely virakti. So Sri Goswami does show that seeing the deity especially the Govinda form can quickly evoke devotional ecstasy even in the neophyte. He said that just by seeing the devotee. Sorry, seeing the Govinda, one can easily develop devotional experience. Even someone is neophyte. Okay. So then here he says, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, that Sri so Guru saying, compose similar metaphor, calling a friend foolish for having heard the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, and thereby becoming completely indifferent to the wonderful. Delightful activities of dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. So he's telling negative thing. Are kya pagal ban ki ab bhagwan ki seva kyu ki? No, apne ghar parivar se virakti ho jayegi like that. So he's saying here that calling a friend foolish for having heard the tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So that is good. Hearing tenth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam is highest. But he's condemning here. Why he's condemning that? Thereby, you know, by hearing 10 kinds of Srimad Bhagavatam, he has developed a detachment from the sense gratification. Especially Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. So basically, he is saying that yes, we should be free from the Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. And for that, you require to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th. <clears throat> so it is said, someone hear the five chapter of Ras Lila, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. 32. Then he can be free from sex desire. Okay, so next is associating with pure devotees. So we can you can see from the chapter 13. Talks very nicely about that. So devotional sorry, chapter 13. So five potent form of devotional studies. So Rupa Goswami stated that five kind of devotional activity, namely reciting Mathura, worshiping the deity of the Lord, reciting Srimad Bhagavatam, serving devotee, serving a devotee, chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, so potent that small attachment to any of these five items can arouse devotional activity in the neophyte. So regarding the worship of the form of the Lord of deity, Rupa Goswami written following us. My dear friend, so we discussed this thing that if you still have any desire to enjoy company of your friend within this material world, then don't look upon the form of Krishna who is standing on the bank of Kesi a bathing place in Vrindavan. It's known as Govinda and his eyes are very ancient. So we discussed this thing. So the purpose of this verse is that if someone become attached to Sri Murti or deity of Krishna by worshipping at home, and then he will forget this relationship of so-called friendship, love, and society. She so will develop the detachment from material attachment. So thus, it is the duty of every householder to install deities of the Lord at home and to begin the process of worshiping along with all the family members. This is recommended for householder, and yeah, we should worship with the principal 
this will save everyone from such unwanted activities as going to clubs cinema dancing parties smoking drinking it is all such a nonsense will forgotten if one stress the worship of the deities at home so he talks about bhagavat samhan again that first was deity worship says my dear police friend i think that we have already heard some of auspicious primas bhagavat which decry seeking the result of fruitive activities like economic development liberation i think that now it's certain that gradually the verse of 10 can go describing the past and lord will enter your ears and go into your heart so he so basically in this chapter rupa goswami has negatively said that are you know if you want to enjoy don't go there sometimes some people don't accept straight away then we say are ye karna mat jao mat karo so like that so in the beginning simad bhagavatam he said that unless one has ability to throw out just like a garbage the fruit is result of ritualistic ceremony economic development and becoming one with the supreme one cannot understand simad bhagavatam so if you have this desire anya vilasita sanyam gyan karma di anavrutam if you have that desire we cannot understand simad bhagavatam So Bhagavatam deals exclusively with devotional service. Only one who studies Srimad Bhagavatam in the spirit of renunciation can understand the past time of the Lord. So we should not read Srimad Bhagavatam if you have material desire. Means you will not get the result of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the, you will not understand the goal of Srimad Bhagavatam by that. So only one. Uh, who studies simad bhagavat in the spirit of renunciation can understand the past time of the lord that are described in the 10th canto in other words one should not try to understand the topic of the 10th canto such as ras lila unless he has spontaneous attraction from simad bhagavat that's why it is said we should not directly read that uh, heart of simad bhagavat on that ras lila chapter 28 29 30 31 32 second chapter of 10th canto of simad bhagavat Before that, you should read from first canto to tenth canto, ninth canto. Then you should enter in tenth canto. And if you read first to ninth canto, then your heart will be purified. Your heart will be purified. Then you will understand who is Krishna. When then, you, if you read tenth canto, then you will not become, you will not judge the Krishna, or you will not take him lightly. Okay, so. One must be situated in pure devotional service before he can read the Srimad Bhagavatam as it is. So, in the about two verses, Rupa Goswami, verses of Rupa Goswami, there are some metaphorical analogies that indirectly condemn the association of materialistic society. So, indirectly is he. So, he condemns the association of materialistic society, friendship, and love. and people are generally attracted to society friendship and love and they make elaborate arrangement and strong endeavors to develop this material contamination but to see the three murtis of radha krishna is, is to forget such endeavors for material associations but if you want to get rid of from all this thing then we should engage in the service of sri murti so rugosha in composes verse in such a way that he was seemingly praising the material association of friendship and love and was condemning the audience of sri murti or gunda this metaphorical analogy is constructed in such a way that things that seem to be praised are condemned and things that are to be condemned are praised whatever was important that was condemned and whatever was condemned that was praised then actual import of verse is that one must see the form of govinda if one at all one to forget the nonsense of material friendship love and society sila rupa goswami has similarly described the transcendental nature of releasing the topic of that nonsense krishna he said a devotee once said that this very astonishing that since i have seen the personality of god who is washed by the tears of my eyes there is a swelling of my body and he has made me failer in executing my duties since seeing him i cannot remain silent at home i wish to go out to him always so if someone heard the past of krishna 
So then person will again want to hear the past name of Lord Krishna. He want to see him again and again if he has seen him once. So what is the purport of this statement? That as soon as one is fortunate enough to con uh, contact the pure devotee, one must be anxious immediately to hear about Krishna, to learn about Krishna, or in other words, to become fully Krishna consciousness. Someone here from pure devotee, they develop this kind of state. There is a statement about hearing and chanting. So first was deity worship. Deity worship, then we saw about Bhagavad Sraman. Then we saw about devotee association. Then now Nam Sankirtan. It is said that saints have been able to hear the vibrating spring of the Veena in the hand of Narada. It's always singing the glories of Lord Krishna. Now this same sound vibration has entered my ears and I'm always feeling the presence of the Supreme Person of God. Personality. Gradually, I am becoming bereft of all material attachments. If someone here, uh, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, engage in Nam Sankirtan, let it develop that attachment. So then, Rupa Goswami mentions about Mathura Mandal. I remember that Lord standing by the bank of the Yamuna River, beautiful, amid the Kadamba tree, where many birds are chirping in the garden. The Lord is standing there even down. These impressions are always giving me transcendental realization of the beauty and bliss. This feeling about Mathura Mandal and Vrindavan described by Rupa Goswami can actually be felt even by non devotees. The place in the 84 square mile district of Mathura is so beautifully situated on the bank of the river Yamuna that anyone who goes there will never want to return to this material world. So, if you want to remain in the material world, please don't go. Okay. So, so all this quality proves that Mathura and Vrindavan are situated transcendentally. Otherwise, there would be no possibility of invoking our transcendental sentiment in this place. And such a transcendental feelings are arose immediately and without fail after one era of Mathura and Vrindavan. Okay, so. Now, will it really happen? So, you say then someone may say that these results are overestimated. So, Rupa Goswami is talking about that. In the statement about devotional service, sometimes it's, it may appear that the results have been overestimated, but actually, there is no overestimation. Some devotees as revealed, some devotees as revealed scripture give evidence have had immediate result by such association. Although this is not possible for all, for example, for, uh, the Kumaras immediately become devoted simply by smelling the incense in the temple. So the results seem overestimated. Okay, but they are factual. Bilbo Mahalda Thakur simply heard about Krishna and then immediately gave up his beautiful girlfriend. He started out for Mathura and Uda. So you might have heard the story about Bilbo Mahalda Thakur. So he was associating with one prostitute. So he was not able to live without her. So wherever she was going, she was going behind him. So one day it was heavy rain. Heavy rain and uh, her, his girlfriend was on other side. So, you know, he was so attached to her, so much attached to her that to cross the river in the night, what happened that he wanted to cross the river and water was full with water. Sorry, the river was full with water. Then somehow he found something and he's cross the uh, river. So uh, actually then later on, you know, I found he sat on the dead body in the cross the river. So then he, so he wanted to enter in the house, her house. So then he entered through, but you no, know, he, he holded one rope like something and pulling that he entered in her room through the window. That you know, rope was snag. So he could not realize that is snag and to which he crossed over the river was dead body. When she, he entered in the room of her girlfriend prostitute, then she told, you know, if you would have attached, developed this much attraction for Krishna, then your life had been uh, perfect. So as soon as he heard about Krishna, she left him. Sorry, he left her immediately. And, uh, you know, he told her, that uh, I think he told one lady that uh, 
प्लीज गिव मी द नीडल्स यू नो क्या बोलते हैं लेडीज यूज आई डोंट नो वट इज इट वट एवर इट मे बी सो इट एज ए नीडल काइंड ऑफ थिंग so it has a, like a j shape for something j p so then we ask that and using that pin he has uh, made himself himself blind so he could not see now so why he did that no when he saw one woman he was following her again so then woman told him what are you doing that he asked can you give me that so using that uh, he made himself himself blind so why he did that because you know, he thought that this eyes are creating so much trouble for me so i am you no know, i see that woman this woman same thing for woman may be possible for men so then he thought better to remove this eyes pluck it out so that's why he has made, he has made himself blind after after that he was traveling to rindavan in such a blindness Then when he entered into Rindavan, he met Lord Krishna personally. Recently, then he has written so many books. Especially he wrote Krishna Karana Amrut. So, what is the meaning of that Krishna Karana Amrut? The song which gives the pleasure to the ear of Krishna. Krishna Karana Amrut. Karana means ear. Krishna Karana. Krishna ke kaan ko jo amrut saman lagta hai. That he has written that. So, if you go to Rindavan, there is a samadhi of Kilva Mangal Thakur. So, if someone has This kind of lusty desire, he can also be liberated just by hearing the name of Krishna. The result is not overestimated, basically. Okay. So Bilwa Mangal Thakur simply heard the heard about Krishna and then immediately gave up his beautiful girlfriend and started out for Mathura and Vrindavan, where he became a perfect Vaishnava. So these statements are not overestimation, nor are they stories. They are actual facts, but are actual facts, but are true for certain devotees. and do not necessarily apply to all what does it mean that means you should have that much great faith that much faith this description even if consider overestimation if someone consider overestimation so must be taken as they are right so even if it is considered as overestimation but we should take it as they are why in order to divert our attention from the Creating material beauty to see the beautiful beauty of Lord, beauty of Krishna consciousness. So, we, so we, what are the product beshne wale? What are they? Naik boy ho jaha tum durasti hai waha. We know this boy, I don't know, but 1996, 1996, I saw in that television. Naik boy hai jaha tum durasti hai waha. And you know, so uh, when you use some cream, you become so handsome, Karen some cream. ब्यूटीफुल तो मुझे भी याद है हमने भी लगा के देखा कभी हुआ ही नहीं सो इट वाज ओवर एस्टिमेशन और वर्ड एडवर्टाइजमेंट में तो इतना अच्छा आता है समवन यूज फेरन एंड सन क्रीम सो मेनी गर्ल्स कम टुवर्ड्स समवन यूज फेरन लवली क्रीम सो मेनी मेंस अट्रैक्टेड टुवर्ड हर रियल लाइफ में ऐसा होता ही नहीं सो सो इज दिस मार्केटिंग ओवर एस्टिमेशन ऐसा भी लग सकता है That's what is mentioned that you know, क्या सच पूछे ऐसा होगा ये एडवर्टाइजमेंट तो नहीं है भक्ति करने का That's what Rupa Goswami is telling that even if this uh, statement seems like overestimation, so what must be taken as they are in order to divert our attention from treating material beauty to eternal beauty of Krishna consciousness. So at least we'll develop a detachment from material enjoyment, material attachment. and for a person who is already in contact with krishna consciousness the disturbed result the disturbed result are not unusual and for a person who is already in contact with krishna consciousness the disturbed result are not unusual so then get the result he has to be remain uh, krishna consciousness he has to remain in the association of devotee or he should be attached to one of the five potent and the bhakti that's very very important सम स्कॉलर बोलते हैं कि यू नो जस्ट फॉलो द वर्णा सम प्रिंसिपल एंड वन कैन ग्रेजुअली राइज टू द परफेक्शन रीच फॉर प्रैक्टिस इन दोस सर्विस सो वी सो इन द थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ भगवत गीता वेयर वी आर राइट नाउ जहां पर हम तीसरा चैप्टर चर्चा कर रहे हैं वहां पे वर्णा सम क्या बताया गया है 
if someone is not uh, performing uh, nishtam karma yog to so, sakam karma yog karo sakam karma yog bhi nahi kar sakte to so, karma kaand karo but karo jo vedon mein bola gaya aisa bhi kar sakte but that is not that has been sanctioned karma kaand so it's not the ultimate this not the ultimate things to do okay so but varnasram is the stepping stone for someone to come to bhakti so someone may argue that by following the principle of varnasram one can gradually rise to the perfection reached by practicing devotional service but this argument is not accepted by great authorities Lord Chaitanya has also condemned this idea while he was talking with Ramananda. Chaitanya Charita Mrita may be aata hai. Okay, that, that takes so much time. Okay. That about gradual development of devotional service. He rejected the idea of importance of Varnasam Dharma when it was put forward by Ramananda. There are some Varnasam Dharma, there is no Krishna in the center. That is called Varnasam Dharma. Where Varnasam Dharma is called Varnasam Dharma. ब्रह्मचर्य श्रम वस्त्र श्रम वन प्रस्थ श्रम सन्यास श्रम देन ब्राह्मण वैश्य शुद्र क्षत्रिय सो फोर आश्रम फोर वर्ण एंड फोर आश्रम आर देर बट नो कृष्ण इन द सेंटर सो दैट इज कॉल्ड मटेरियलिस्टिक वर्ण आश्रम धर्म देर इज अनदर वर्ण आश्रम धर्म वेर देर इज ए कृष्ण इन द सेंटर सो दैट इज कॉल्ड देवी वर्ण आश्रम धर्म दे सेड दैट दिस एडवांसमेंट ऑफ वर्ण आश्रम So, Devi Varna Samsam is different. Prabhupada so, said this 50% mission is to establish Devi Varna Samsam. Okay, so he said that this advancement of Varna Samsam is merely external. There is higher principle in Bhagavad Gita. Principle. So, higher than one. Varna Samsam is not just the, the mean. It's not the ultimate. In Bhagavad Gita also, Lord says that one has to give up all other principle of elevation and take simply To the method of Krishna consciousness, Sarva Dharma and Parichchya, Maa may come soon. Sare Dharma Tyago or Bhagwan Ji bolte hui kar, Dharma to Sare Sare Dharma to Sare Sare. So Bhagwan bolte hui Dharma. So that will help one achieving the highest perfection of life. So when we accept Krishna consciousness, then we achieve the highest perfection of life. So in eleven canto twenty chapter, Simal Bhagavatam, Lord Himself says. One should execute the prescribed duties of Varna and Ashram as long as he has not developed a spontaneous attachment for hearing about my past time and activities. Varna Ashram means Dharma is to bring one to the platform of devotional service. Now, if someone is not able to perform, attracted to devotional service, then we tell him, "Okay, do karma kaan. After the karma kaan, okay, then do Varna Ashram karma kaan." So then he gradually come to the platform of bhakti, but that's not the ultimate. Okay, that is what he said. So one should execute the prescribed duties of one and ashram as long as one has not developed spontaneous attachment for hearing about my past time and activities. If he has developed this attachment for Krishna consciousness, then not required to do other things. In other words, the prescribed form of one and ashram are ritualistic ceremony of religion intended for economic development, dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. Are ritualistic ceremony for religion intended. So this is Varna Sram Dharma is indirectly, you know, to gratify our senses through the religion religion way for Dharma to come. All of these things are recommended for persons who have not developed Krishna consciousness. In fact, all such activities are recommended in the revealed scripture only to bring one to the point of Krishna consciousness. But one who has already developed spontaneous attachment for Krishna does not require to execute the duties prescribed in the scripture. So we saw sixty four angas of bhakti, and we saw that the results are overestimated, but they are not. We should accept them as it is. But actually, there is no overestimation. Okay. This description, even if consider our estimation, must taken as they are in order to divert our attention. We should take. Okay, so thank you very much.
actually you know uh, yesterday i could not cover uh, serving krishna in servitude and friendship properly anyway sometime when i get one day we'll talk keep that specific topic it's very long topic but i could not cover but definitely i'll cover in future okay so thank you very much uh, i have that i have completed 12th and 13th chapter so i remember some two points i have not covered properly so if you have any question come and feedback you can unmute and you can ask anyway tomorrow we'll continue with bhagavad gita